timeless, revolutionary classic. The 20 fragrances I'm about to share with you here in this video shaped up the fragrance world we know today. These scent profiles, DNAs, if you will, are groundbreaking trendsetters and are still around today. If you are embarking in this great journey, if you're just getting started into the journey of the fragrance world, if you're just discovering fragrances, or if you're a huge frag head, you owe it to yourself to at least know the fragrances I'm about to share with you. Welcome back to another video, Max here. If you guys love to make a great first impression, smelling great is a great way to do that. Of course, before I get into the list, a couple caveats, or just one caveat really, or two. Number one, all fragrances on this list are pre-2000s, and most likely a fragrance that you enjoy today and love took notes and inspiration from the fragrance that I'm about to share with you. And this is actually a top 21. There's another 21st fragrance that I'm gonna share with you as a bonus in the end, which is the most impactful, the most impressive fragrance in my fragrance journey, the one that really got me into the hobby. You wanna pause the video right now and try to let me know what you think that fragrance is gonna be? I'd love to read your comments. All right, we're gonna start off the list going back to 1934, guys. And you might think, holy crap, Max, you're gonna tell us about a fragrance from 1934? Well, here's the deal. They're timeless, they're groundbreaking, they're trendsetter. They are still around today for a reason. They're still selling bunch. This one here is Polonome de Cajon from the brand Cajon. And this one here, ladies and gentlemen, it started a whole genre of fragrances. If you love vanilla in your fragrances today, most likely there is inspirations from this fragrance. They're borrowing from this fragrance, which is really a lavender sweet vanilla that's a little bit metallic. It's absolutely amazing. You smelled any of these fragrances. Sure, maybe your grandfather or your father wore this fragrance, but you're going to stand out because most likely people are wearing heavy vanillas, heavy tonkas, heavy ambroxan fragrances out there. They're overly sweet. And this stuff here is really gonna make you smell sophisticated, elegant, in a timeless and classy manner. So Paul Nome de Cajon from 1934 is a fragrance that deserves to be talked about and you owe it to yourself to at least try this stuff. It is absolutely incredible. Next up from the house of Chanel, this is the first masculine Chanel fragrance from 1955. This is Port Monsieur, later reintroduced by Jacques Pouge, the in-house perfumer in 1989. And that was when uh, they came up with the fragrance being an Eau de Toilette Concentré, which really became a Fougier. But this one here that I'm about to share with you, which you can still find at Chanel's boutiques and whatnot, this is going to be a great Chypre fragrance. So all the perfect ingredients of a Chypre, the green, the moss, it's just a great fragrance. I think about a classy gentleman. When I smell this, it's exactly what comes to mind. Someone that's really well put together, really well versed, someone who's very well educated. This will definitely convey that message. It's a timeless fragrance from 1955 that is just an amazing Chypre. If you love Chypres, this is in the top of your list to get, trust me. We have a couple of fragrances from the house of Guerlain. You can't do a top timeless without mentioning Guerlain. This one from 1965 which is a signature scent of one Keith Richards from Rolling Stones and many other famous celebrities. This is Habit Rouge. Now, Habit Rouge is a great fragrance that took inspiration from Chalimar from 1920. They wanted to make a fragrance that had that vanillin, you know, powdery kind of a vibe that you get with that beautiful Chalimar fragrance, but they wanted to do a kind of masculine version of that fragrance. And this is the Eau de Parfum concentration. You can get the Eau de Toilette, which is the original concentration, which I highly suggest you do get the Eau de Toilette, which will actually project longer. This one here is an Eau de Parfum. We'll stay closer, we'll have longer, you know, we'll have great longevity, but it won't project as the Eau de Toilette. But Habit Rouge is a great trendsetter fragrance on its own. And it did, you know, broke ground throughout the decades when it was since released in 1965, all the way until today. I know people that wear this as their signature scent, including the man himself from Guerlain, Thierry Wasser. It's actually his signature scent. Now we jump from 1965, we jump a year later, 1966. This fragrance was Steve McQueen's uh, signature scent. And the nose behind this fragrance became one of those perfumers that everyone took notes from. To this day, he's considered one of the god perfumers in the world, Edmund Rudnitska. The fragrance is Eau Sauvage from the great house of the Christian Dior, which is my favorite uh, designer brand. I think they, they've done incredible fragrances. There's also other Dior fragrances on this list, of course. And Eau Sauvage, is a green fragrance that's very citrus. And you can actually read reviews about this fragrance in many different books, and they'll give this fragrance five stars. This is a five star citrus aromatic fragrance. It's not really a sheep or it's not really a fougere, although it borrows elements from both di different you know, types of genres. It's like a cologne type of a genre, which has a little bit more of a body to it because you have amber in the base, dried fruits, very citrus, very aromatic. 
very intrinsic, just perfection for those people that enjoy a great citrus scent. I think this is definitely a holy grail when it comes to the citrus aromatic green fragrances of the world. Just absolutely phenomenal. Next up, also from 1966, we have Aramis, the original Aramis Pour Homme or the original Aramis. This particular fragrance is a fougere, a great fougere powerhouse type of a fragrance. And this particular fragrance opened up the doors to all the fougeres and powerhouse fragrances of the late 70s and 80s that we'll, that we'll be talking about here in this video and that you might know about. Just incredible, a little bit soapy, a little bit floral, but definitely has that gorgeous oak moss in the base. It's very green, almost pungent at times. This one here is a late 90s, uh, I believe early 2000s formulation. So not as pungent, not as dirty or animalistic as the earlier version of this fragrance, but still a timeless scent that you ought to try because this is the one that really started it all. So most of the fragrances I'm talking about here today are vintage fragrances, meaning they, for the most part, are reformulated, but you can still find them in their original forms if you look carefully enough, which is great. I suggest, I highly suggest you guys try to do that. But when it comes to fragrance legends, which is exactly what we're talking about, this is a book that you guys really should check out. Perfume Legends, Fragrances of the World, you know, the list goes on and on. Of course, the great creation of Fragrance Wheel was made by Michael Edwards, which is also the writer of this book and also going to grace us with his appearance at Scent Explorer 2022, fourth annual this year. The International Niche Perfume Convention happening in New York December 2nd and 3rd. Guys, details below. Go to scentexplorer.com. He's going to be doing a great piece on fragrances of the world, legend, perfume legends, and of course, the Fragrance Wheel. It's going to be an amazing class amongst other master classes, workshops, dozens of brands. I truly hope to see you guys in person this year. It's going to be one for the books. Carry on the list here. This one from 1968. This is a great, also green fragrance, Fougere. But what they did here, it made this spicier than the fragrances I talked about thus far. 1968 Brut by Fabergé. This is a great spicy Fougere. I love the stuff. It's green. I do have an aftershave of this fragrance. My dad used to wear this. It's almost boozy when you spray this fragrance. What I get here is an almost whiskey that's very green and, and coniferous is, is the vibe that I get here. Very spicy, very green, almost boozy, powerful stuff. It's one of those that you don't need more than two or three sprays because it's gonna be one of those very potent and powerful fragrances, but it's got a great place in history. And the scent profile here is one of those very unique scent to this day. Of course, there has been other fragrances that were inspired by this, but there's nothing like Boot. Now we're jumping from 1968 to 1978. This particular fragrance was actually featured at the movie Scarface. This is Lagerfeld's classic. Now this one here was really a trendsetter because it introduced something very unique to masculine fragrances. It gave this sweet, almost gourmand, vanilla, almondy kind of undertone. This was one of the first fragrances to do that. It does have a savat or castorium note here, so it is a little bit bitter and animalistic but that almondy, creamy, vanilla kind of a facet here, as opposed to Caron that I talked about as the first fragrance, this is going to be a lot sweeter and definitely more gourmandy and creamier. As Caron was more metallic, this is definitely creamier, bitter, and even sweeter as well, and a little bit powdery too as it dries down, but definitely an amazing scent to find and discover. Now, 1978, ladies and gentlemen, was a fantastic year. As you're gonna see here, there's a lot of fragrances here from 1978, from 1981. Those were very pivotal years for powerhouse fragrances, such as the one I'm about to share with you. This is Polo Green, the original from Ralph Lauren. This is the fragrance that put them on the map. You know, where I lived, you know, this was a symbol of success. The gentlemen that wore this fragrance were usually gentlemen that had, you know, club memberships or drove nice cars like BMWs or Mercedes. So from my cycle of people that I knew in my life, people that wore this fragrance were actually men that did very well for themselves. And what this is, is a leather and tobacco fragrance. Um, this one here on my hands, actually a Cosmere edition of this fragrance, which is a vintage edition. But even what you find today is going to be very similar to this fragrance, minus the oak moss and some of the heavier elements that this had were really neutered. So it's gonna be maybe a half of what this fragrance was. But if you can try to find a fragrance like this one from Cosmere, which you'll find here in the sticker, you will love the scent because it's a very pungent leather and tobacco scent that there's just nothing like this. Amazing trendsetter fragrance that it's one of my all time favorites. Next up, this is definitely one of my all time favorites, probably sitting in a second or third spot. It's my all time, my lifetime favorite fragrance. I'm not gonna get into it because you guys know I love this. This is a Zara Porum. And what this is, they took the Fougere genre and they added this note of anise. We made it very different and very peculiar to any other Fougeres up to this point. 1978, a Zara Porum. 
Here's the deal though, that Anise that they added here is not gonna give you a licorice kind of a vibe that's dark and, and, and hard to, to smell. It's actually adding this really nice spiciness to the fragrance that really made it different than all the other fougeres, again, up to this point. This is just perfection when it comes to the fougere, exactly because of that. It has all the elements of a fougere, the lavender, uh, the spices, but also a great oak moss and vetiver in the base, along with that anise up top, which is just a Zara Pro. Starting here, the 1981 batch of fragrances, which you guys will see quite a few. This is the second from Chanel, and this is the same shape bottle, but all dark. And it's also named after a Greek god. By now, you should know I'm talking about Entheus from Chanel. And what this is, is exactly what the other one before this one was, is a great fougere. The only difference here between this one and the other one I talked about is this one here is going to be a lot more animalistic. There's a note of castorium here that just kicks butt. It's just very powerful. It's one of those really you know, fragrances that will get there before you arrive as you wear it. And when you leave, it's gonna stay like a presence. People will know that this was you that was in the room. It's one of those guys. So if you love powerhouse fragrances, even to this day, this is actually um, 2005 uh, formulation. It's still a very powerful fragrance. Of course, not gonna be as animalistic, as oak mossy as the older, earlier versions of the fragrance, but it still retains that beautiful powerhouse Fougere vibe, an amazing powerhouse from Chanel Antheus from 1981. All right, guys, before we get into the last 10 fragrances, there's really 11, because I have the bonus that I talked about, I wanna share with you that you can find all fragrances that I'm talking about here in the description of this video. I'm gonna put the link along with any associated code or discount details, everything you need to know, making your life easier. And you know you can find all these fragrances at fragranceby.ca, which is a partner of this, this channel, the best place for great indie, designer or niche discounted fragrances. Check out details below and enjoy. Next up, we have another Fougere from 1981, but this is Dracar Noir. This is a fragrance that people love to this day. I know a lot of people in my family that still wear this as their signature scent. Of course, there has been other great Guy La Roche, but what I love about Guy La Roche is that they don't put fragrances out all the time, but the fragrances that they do put out actually really make a statement. And this is a statement making fragrance. It's a Fougere that's a little bit soapy, probably the most soapy and funny enough, the bottle itself looks like a soap bar. It is the, the soapiest of all the fougeres on this list. So if you wanted something that's a cleaner fougere, not as, you know, pungent, not as animalistic, definitely consider this one. I think it's still great today. I love this stuff. When I'm feeling nostalgic and I want something that's gonna remind me of my family members, uncles, I definitely pull this off and I'm telling you, you're gonna smell great. Now we're talking about a fragrance from Yves Saint Laurent. This one here is from 1981. This is Coros. Now anybody that's in the fragrance community or has been liking fragrances for the last few years will know about this fragrance because it's one of those polarizing scents most likely the most polarizing on this list because it has an animalistic note that resembles urinal cake or the scent of urine i know it's going to sound weird but on skin this stuff develops beautifully and it gets soapier cleaner as it warms up with your body chemistry some of the notes here are going to be the animalistic civet that it has of course uh it's been reformulated this is the one with the silver shoulders if you find what's available in the market today it's going to be animalistic just like this powerhouse as well but it's going to not have that urinal animalistic note that you get here however this is the great scent guys because it also has besides the oak moss the heavy powerful kind of notes it has a gorgeous note of honey i love honey in my fragrances as it develops on skin it gets soapier sweeter and sexier kuros is one of those scents guys trust me if you want sensuality, this is sensuality in a bottle. And if you talk to your grandpa, your uncle, or somebody in your family that wore this fragrance, they will tell you probably some of their escapades and journeys that they had with this particular fragrance. It is one of those. This next one from the house of Christian Dior, 1987, 1988. This fragrance here took the world by storm. So much so that I knew ladies that actually wore this fragrance, believe it or not. This is going to be a leather fragrance with a note of a violet leaf, which gives the scent a petrol gasoline kind of a vibe. This is Fahrenheit, guys. An outstanding fragrance. I'm not gonna waste the spray here. This is a vintage bottle. What you find today is gonna be great. Just not as pungent, not as petroly as this one is, is the, the vintage ver version is going to be. If you can find a vintage bottle, don't hesitate to grab it because it's one of those fragrances that is just phenomenal. This is one of those masterpieces of the world of perfumery. This is really a fragrance that took the world by storm for a reason. And even to this day, there's not much out there that's similar to this fragrance. This is just one of those unique scents that Dior did that really put him on the pedestal for a reason. Fahrenheit, just like Eau Sauvage, 
you know, Dior always throughout the years gave us incredible fragrances. In fact, if you guys want to see a top video post 2000, leave me in a like and I'll come back with that video. You know, Dior Homme, Dior Homme Intense. I mean, Dior always gave us groundbreaking fragrances. Not so much now, but this is definitely one of those. This next one from 1988. This fragrance put this brand on the map. Granted, Zeno in 1985, if I'm not mistaken, was a great one, but this is really the one that made the brand very viral. We're talking magazines, commercials on TV. Everybody was rocking this fragrance. This is Davidoff Cool Water, and this is 1988 from Pierre Bourdon, the same perfumer that did incredible fragrances from Creed. This particular genre was really um, taken off at this point, which is the aquatic genre. You have the lavender here, but really that aquatic marine sea kind of note with the synthetic note of cologne was really introduced at this point and really made the aquatic genre what it is today. Still to this day, the blue scent was really popular due to this particular fragrance. Next up from 1989, this is also created by nose or perfumer Pierre Bourdon, which created Davidoff's Cool Water. 1989 Yope Om. Now the juice is getting greener here, but believe me, it still smells incredible. And this is going to be a fougere, but with a different take on it. Amplification of vanilla here and spices like cinnamon. It's really a cinnamon bomb along with the vanilla, but it's done so beautifully. It is pungent, however, and it's overly sweet sometimes, even syrupy, sickly sweet. I don't suggest or advise you guys to wear this during the summertime or any warm tropical season or outdoors because it's gonna make you sick. It's a little bit too much. But however, if you're indoors, you know, with air conditioning or if it's fall or winter time and it's cold, this stuff really shines. And it's also similar to Individual by Mont Blanc, original Centel from Creed, all created by Pierre Bourdon. Yop Om is the one that started this fougere with this gourmand facet of the spices and the vanilla. Just amazing stuff. Next up, we have, now we're getting into the 90s. This is a 1992, and the 90s were also incredible for great creations. This is Jean-Paul Guerlain's creation, and I believe this is the last one from Guerlain on this list. This is Heritage. So if you love Chanel Number no. 5, or you know Chanel Number no. 5, because I'm sure it's one of the most popular fragrances in the world, think about Chanel Number no. 5 turned masculine. You have the aldehydes, you have the sheeper green components, lots of florals in here, but it's in, there's even a patchouli that's a little dark and chocolatey in the base, but it's mostly a green Chypre for men. It's like they took notes and inspiration from the heritage of Guerlain with some inspiration from Chanel number no. five. Hence the fact we have this incredible fragrance from 1992, which I think is just one of the best fragrances ever made. Jumping up to 1995, this one here from Francis Kirchhoff. Um, this is not gonna be one of the NF MFKs because this is prior to his MFK line. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mans, the torso. This particular fragrance, guys, it's basically a gorgeous, you know, barbershop scent. Like I talked about, many of these fragrances took that fougere style of a fragrance and made it more of a gourmand, spicy kind of a take on it, just like Yope that I talked about in 1989. Francis Kirchhoff nailed it with this creation in 1995. If you find older juices of this fragrance, it is just amazing it's groundbreaking i know a lot of people that wore this and wear it to this day as their signature scent because it's got this vanilla spices cinnamon it's got the mint up top it's it's just gonna grab you by the nose and it won't let go it's one of those scents even what's around today is great but if you can find the vintage bottle you're gonna absolutely love it because it's powerful it's long lasting like i said it's a spicy you know almost not gourmand but a spicier fougere that is just groundbreaking and trendsetter. This fragrance was very copied too. And most of these fragrances that I'm talking about throughout the decades were very copied because they were very successful DNAs and scent profiles. From 95, we jump ahead to 1996. This fragrance is mind boggling that to this day in 2022, it is one of the most sold masculine fragrances worldwide. Believe it or not, this is Aqua de Gio, the original from Giorgio Romani. Alberto Marias is the perfumer and he's one of the most talked about perfumes in the industry. For better or worse, he does amazing DNAs. And this is one of those. This is basically an aquatic fragrance, just like cool water, but it has this just incredible synthetic note that is, it smells like a sea breeze and it's got some florals in here. It smells amazing. You put this fragrance on almost like a cucumberish kind of a vibe as well, like vegetal note, but it's one of those fragrance guys that you wear this fragrance and I guarantee you nine times out of 10, you're gonna get compliments. People are gonna love the way you smell. It's very likable. It's very inviting. 
Hence the fact why people love to wear this fragrance. And it's one of the most sold fragrances, just like the Your Sauvage is right now, one of the top selling fragrances worldwide, because it does what it's supposed to do well. Simple as that. Following the success of the predecessor of this fragrance from 1992, Mugler decided to come up with a fragrance for men that had this gourmand facet like no other. His thought was really bringing the atmosphere of a carnival, cotton candy, caramel apples, you know what I'm talking about, the sweets that you get in those particular settings, giving us none other than Amen, the original from 1996. And what a groundbreaking fragrance this was. This is like the opposite you know, spectrum of fragrances. As Aqua de Gio from 1996 was this aquatic citrus aromatic fragrance, this was a punch in the face or a punch in the nose for that matter. A gorgeous gourmand fragrance. We're talking caramel, milky notes, cotton candy, tar note, which a lot of people couldn't stand. When I smelled this at first, let me tell you guys, I was blown away. We have coffee notes, patchouli, I mean, it's a bomb. And when I tried this fragrance for the first time, I was like, what is this? You know, I, I, it took me years to really warm up to this fragrance. When I finally wore this fragrance on skin, I was blown away by the transition, the development, and the attention this fragrance gave me. Amen 1996 is a masterpiece and one that, if you're getting into this journey, it's a must try. There's no two ways about it. This last one here from 1999, really the one that closed this particular section of greats, I think. Um, and all the fragrances that came after really took inspiration from these guys. This one here is Allure Ohm, the original from 1999. And as you guys can see, we do wear our fragrances and this is almost over. This is an original from 99. It might take me a while to wear them through because I have so many. But this one here, guys, is just an amazing scent. Uh, Jacques Polge, the in-house perfumer, released this fragrance in 99 and this is a masterpiece. This really took the world by storm. I remember how much people talked about this, how much people wore this fragrance and how great they smelled because this is a really a trifecta of rosewood, which you don't see much used in fragrances, vetiver and leather. And of course you have some fruits up top like peach, you have some floral notes, there's coconut here. It is just a glamorous you know, bunch of notes blended to perfection. This is a standout scent. It's creamy, it's green, the sandalwood here has done great. And it's my favorite from the line. You know, Chanel Allure Homme Sport is great. Uh, this Chambon Blanche is amazing. But this is the one that started it all and it's a very, very classy scent. If you dressed up and you want a fragrance that's really gonna make you stand out, definitely check out Allure Homme. I think it's the best one from the line for a reason. From 1999 to this day is my favorite and I'm glad to share it with you today. All right, this is the bonus feature of this video. Can you, did you guys guess which fragrance is the one that really was the most impressive, the one that really impacted me very greatly to start this hobby, the one that really, I was like, what is this fragrance? And I remember vividly when I first smelled this fragrance, I had to have it. This is Dolce & Gabbana Pro Om, the original with the sticker. If you wanna get this particular formulation, the one that's made in Italy, you must find this, the one that has a sticker that was originally released in 94 all the way until 2000. And to my knowledge, this has been formulated three times. It went from made in Italy, then it was made in Germany, and now it's currently made in UK. And the particular fragrance is really a third of what this fragrance was. If you wear the current formulation today, it's gonna be good. Uh, you're gonna get a sense of what the fragrance was, but really the ones with the stickers are where it's at. It's just an amazing fragrance. It's been a part of my life for every great event, every single memory that I can remember, this fragrance was a part of my life. I love it. I have multiple bottles of this particular one. And what this is, it's a fougere, it's a lavender base scent with spices. And what made this a standout fragrance was the tobacco, the blonde tobacco that they added in this fragrance, which is different than any other fragrance you could ever smell. Trust me, this is where it's at, at least for me. You, I guess you could say this is my signature scent. If you think about Max and you know me in person, you know that I love this stuff. Know that you can try any of these fragrances, 21 fragrances mentioned in this video at perfume.com. Enjoy my code MAX12. Join the Perfume crew for extra savings, not only for perfume.com, but also from fragranceby.ca and free bottle giveaways every month, guys. Details below, you can find anything indie, designer, and niche when you wanna try it before you buy. We're talking about decants, when you want to try it, you want to cough up the dough and buy these fragrances. I'm talking about vintage fragrances, guys. They have all the stuff that I'm talking about here and more. Details below. Enjoy. And as always, guys, wear what truly moves you. I'll see you guys right back here very soon. Take care.